Can AMD's new Ryzen 6000 series with NVIDIA graphics finally match up to the M2 chip in this M2 MacBook Air? Well, today we will find out because we have this brand new Lenovo laptop that not only is priced lower than Apple's, but also gives you a lot more value. So we're also gonna compare the displays, the keyboards, the speakers and webcams, along with real world performance to see which one of these machines is the better one and if Windows actually has some great competition and I'm super excited to check it out. Now, let's start out with the actual designs. This Lenovo, it's classy, it's kind of old school, but they added some modern touches. It's really interesting how the MacBook is all flat now, whereas this Lenovo went to a nice round style, kind of bubbly right there at the end and a little bit tapered. Now we also have a lot more buttons and ports. We have a USB over here, headphone jack, a power button here, and then we literally have a switch which turns off the webcam. And on the other side, we have another USB-A port and two USB type C's, which brings me to Thunderbolt. Because this is an AMD laptop, it doesn't have it. So the MacBook's two Thunderbolt ports can actually have four times the data. And of course the MacBook now has MagSafe, so you don't have to use one of the USB-C ports to charge like you do on the Lenovo. With that, the Lenovo is a fair bit thicker, not only on the back, but even on the front where it tapers. And it's also significantly heavier as well, coming in at 3.5 pounds compared to 2.7, and that is noticeable. Honestly, it seems to be more of a competitor to the 14-inch MacBook Pro, but because of that price point, it falls in line with the Air. Getting into the inside, one awesome thing is the facial recognition with Windows Hello. And this thing has a ton of sensors uh, which means it can look at depth, so it'll be more secure. And I wish we had that with the M2 MacBook Air, but we just have Touch ID. Now, Lenovo is known for their nice keyboards, and the keys themselves do feel nice, but I'm not a fan of how small the actual key caps are. The MacBook Air's keys are wider, and I prefer them overall. And the same thing goes for the trackpad. This magnetic one is fantastic, whereas the Lenovo, it is still using a diving board design that isn't bad, but it's definitely not great. Now, what about the speakers? Apple got rid of the speaker grills. They put the speakers right over here, bouncing off the display instead of up firing. So let's go ahead and compare them. Well, that was a disappointment. The M2 MacBook Air got quieter this year. Uh, it's not as, as wide a stereo sound, but it still destroys the speakers that in this larger and heavier Lenovo. Now, as far as the webcams, both of them are 1080p, but there could be a lot of differences. So here is the M2 MacBook Air's webcam and the microphone. And here is Lenovo's 1080p webcam and their microphones. You guys let me know which one looks better and which one sounds better down in the comment section below. As for displays, Apple calls theirs a 14 inch, just like Lenovo, but this is a 13.6 compared to a 14.5. So it is slightly larger. Now, as far as the resolution, I was surprised that this is a 3K display. That is a perfect balance between sharpness and battery life compared to Apple's, which is close to that 2.5. Now the kicker is that this display can support 120 Hertz. Now it's not enabled out of the box because it uses a lot more battery. It's not the same as ProMotion that can slow itself down, but it is nice to have. And with that, this is a touch screen as well. So uh, you can just move stuff around, you can scroll, which Apple obviously doesn't do that. Now the Lenovo isn't as bright coming in at 400 nits compared to 500. And with that, it's a lot more reflective as well, which is a bummer. And that's probably because of the touchscreen layer. So using it outside might be a bit tough. 
And the same thing when you're watching videos. The blacks look great because of that touchscreen layer compared to a much deeper black here and highlights also pop a lot more. Lenovo says that the display is factory calibrated, but a lot of the colors just seem kind of muted. Uh, so I would say probably for accuracy, it's better to go with the MacBook, better contrast. But of course, this has its benefits as well. And now let's see what this thing could do getting into performance. The first thing I wanna test is the SSD speed. Not only do we have one terabyte instead of 512 over here, but it's also PCI Gen 4 SSDs. Now, looking at the actual speed, it does not look like Gen 4 performance, even though they're advertising it. So maybe the connection is Gen 4, but the SSD is actually not that fast. The MacBook's a little bit slower in write, but as far as the read, it is faster. I was genuinely not expecting that, but I guess you are getting a whole terabyte. Now I'm really curious about the web browsing performance with this new AMD uh, 6000 series. It's a lot better. And I'm using Chrome on both to make it fair. We have a score of 204, which is not bad, and it is on battery right now, compared to 353, which is insanely good. Nothing else can match up. So for web-based applications, Google Drive, Docs, the MacBook is the winner. And now let's push the processors here. We have a Ryzen 6800HS Creator Edition, which has eight cores, 16 threads, up to 4.7 gigahertz compared to an eight core, but only four are fast, with the M2 going up to 3.5. All right, and the performance is in, and you guys have to see this. We have 6,017 multi-core score compared to 8,961. That is crazy. Now, single core, also a massive, massive difference. Now, we are in battery power, right? This has a large battery, and we do have it set to maximum performance. We checked all the other power settings. Everything's maxed out. It's in extreme mode. We still have a 50% difference in multi-core. That is crazy. Now with that, we have 75% of battery life remaining, four hours or so, whereas on the MacBook, we're still at 92%. And we haven't been doing things that are that tough yet. So let's go ahead and plug this thing in since it obviously needs to be plugged in to get the full performance, which is one thing that frustrates me about a lot of Windows laptops, and let's see what it can do. All right, there we go. We have 8,893, much better, but still slightly behind the M2 MacBook Air. And as far as single core, it is also faster, but it's still about 28% slower. So uh, the MacBook is competing. Now, of course, this is a fanless machine. So let's go ahead and test out something that's gonna push these a little bit harder. Now we're starting Cinebench R23, and I wanna see, one, how hot does this thing get and how much power does it use? Dang, 65 watts with this AMD processor. Okay, that is insane. And so far, it's still running there. All right, I spoke too soon. 54, it's starting to slow down. The M2 Air hit a peak of 23 compared to 65, and now it's running at 20 compared to 54 or so. Now, of course, this thing is heating up. The M2 MacBook Air is fanless, it's hot. We're here, the fans turned on almost instantly, but it's keeping up that power, so I'm very curious what we get. We're almost done here, and it's crazy. How hot this thing is, 49.50 at the hottest points here, compared to the MacBook, the hottest point is 47, and that this thing is still running at 54 watts after all this time. The M2 Air is now only using 12.5 watts because it's throttled down, it's ran too hot, and now this only thing it could do is slow down. Now, we did show off how we used a laptop cooler and some thermal pads, and maintain performance uh, way better and consistently. And look at that difference. We have 7,958 on the MacBook. All right, that's decent, not bad. It did slow down, but 11,807 with this AMD processor plugged in. That is 48% more powerful for this extended task.
Now, if we went longer, uh, then the MacBook would slow down to about 7,300, and then using our cooler, it would stay about 8,350. Still no comparison. Now, what I'm curious about is, how is this gonna compare when it comes down to real world tasks? Now, as far as graphics performance, we have the NVIDIA RTX 3050 GPU in the Lenovo versus the Bend 8-core graphics in the M2 MacBook Air. And look at that, the NVIDIA graphics are more than twice as powerful as the Apple ones. And then I ran it again, unplugged, and it did go down uh, just a tiny bit, pretty much twice the performance. So that's great that it doesn't slow down. Let's put those graphics to use with Blender. This is one area where the NVIDIA graphics are really great at, especially with OptiX rendering. Dang, this thing is smoking it. We have 12 seconds remaining here compared to two minutes. All right, that was 26 seconds for the Lenovo and two minutes and 16 seconds for our MacBook Air. Now, why in the world is it so fast? Well, because OptiX uses the ray tracing cores in the NVIDIA graphics and it makes it extremely fast. So if you wanna work with 3D graphics, you should definitely get an NVIDIA laptop. Now, on the flip side, for video editing, I have a standard 4K project opener right here with some LUTs, some film grain, and both these laptops are handling it perfectly. Now, the Lenovo is running its fans. It's not maxed out like in Cinebench, uh, but maybe 50% playing this back. And people talk about how the MacBooks have great media engines and that's why it's so fast, but Nvidia has excellent ones themselves. And now let's go ahead and export this five minute project. Our Lenovo is encoding at about 54 frames per second compared to about 78, 80 on the MacBook Air running. Uh, silently, of course, and without the power cable plugged in. The Mac took a minute and 32 seconds compared to two minutes and 14 seconds. Now, that is still a killer speed and performance for this Lenovo. If it had Intel integrated graphics, it would be six, seven minutes. So that is great, but it's still 50% slower. Now, just like in Blender, where the Lenovo can use the ray tracing cores, Apple added ProRes decoders and encoders to the M2 MacBook. So playing back these ProRes files, the MacBook barely has to use any power compared to using a lot of CPU and graphics. That also means they can fly through ProRes footage and even work with ProRes RAW in Final Cut, taking just 36 seconds in order to encode this five minute project. So for most video creators working with 4K footage, uh, maybe ProRes and compressed, the MacBook, even the Air is the way to go. But what about photography? This is an area where it's gonna use the CPU and the graphics. I have the latest version of Photoshop opened up on both. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a photo merge with a bunch of images. Our MacBook's not really using that much of the CPU and the graphics. I wonder how much the neural engine is helping it out. Wow, okay, the MacBook is done. We could just crop in after that. The Lenovo is running its fans pretty loud because it's using a lot of that raw performance that is higher than the MacBook Air, but the MacBook Air stayed really cool because of that extra help and that neural engine. All right, it is done. That took three minutes and two seconds compared to one minute and 52 seconds. So not twice as fast, but it's getting closer to that. And honestly, that is something that I was not expecting just because the graphics are faster, the CPU is faster, and we're plugged in compared to unplugged. And now we are in Lightroom Classic, which is great when you have a lot of photos to edit. I have 50, 42 megapixel edited images. And as I switch them, they have to apply all those effects. This uses the graphics and the processor. And it's interesting that each time I flip through, the MacBook is faster every single time. Now we know that SSDs, these are PCI Express 4, they're fairly close, but most of this just graphics based because the images are about 40 megabytes a piece. I'm honestly surprised by this because it's not using any encoders or anything like that. And now let's go ahead and export these 50 images. Wow, this is unreal. The MacBook is flying. I know unified memory also helps, not that it's a cheat, but it's just more efficient, everything being together. And it is almost done here. So it looks like with the Windows laptop, both the CPU and the graphics are being used. I did enable full graphics acceleration, but it's taking turns. The CPU will kick up, then it'll send off 
uh, the processing to the graphics, so the CPU slows down, back to the CPU for each image, whereas the MacBook, it shares all the data. All right, guys, it is finished. That took two minutes and two seconds, which is still not bad, compared to a minute and 12 seconds. So almost twice as fast for the Mac, showing off just how good having that unified Apple Silicon with the memory there, just the efficiency. We have the raw performance in Cinebench and in Geekbench Metal for graphics, but when it comes together, well, you guys see the difference there. So overall, well, what did we learn? Yes, it's a, a great price. You do get a terabyte and you get 16 gigs of RAM, so a little bit less expensive, but the SSD isn't a PCI Express four speeds like we've seen with a Dell. And with that, even though in Blender, Nvidia graphics are amazing, for pretty much everything else, even the fanless MacBook Air does a much better job. Speakers, um, you guys let me know about the webcam. It is really impressive. So there you guys go. If you like Windows, it's still a great laptop for a great price. There's a lot of performance and for gaming, it'll be great. But as an overall machine, this is why a lot of people are switching over from Windows to MacBooks ever since Apple Silicon came out. So thank you guys for watching. Go ahead and click that circle above to subscribe. Check out one of those great videos right over there. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next video.